Next is the Hobby King MX2, which I've had for way too long now, because it arrived around about the same time that we bought the new house, started demolishing it, started rebuilding it, didn't have a workshop, had to build the workshop, and then moved in. So, we already made a short video showing the assembly, but it's time to actually get her finished and get her in the sky. The plane itself comes very highly finished and with everything that you need, barring receiver and batteries. It comes with a carbon fiber wing tube and landing gear, plastic wheel pants, and everything else is pretty much already there. We just need to assemble it. First step is installing the elevator. This just slots into the fuselage. We then measure both sides to make sure that it's perfectly straight to the wing by measuring the wing tip to the tip of the elevator on both sides. And then once we've done that, we're gonna glue it in place. Now we need to make sure to use foam safe cyano. So do a quick test first, just to make double sure that your cyano is okay for this kind of foam. And if it is, proceed to gluing the rest of it. We'll also glue in place the small foam wedge, which covers up the gap through which we inserted the elevator. Next up, we need to glue in the rudder hinges. Now this is always a little bit of an awkward job, but the slots are already pre-made for us. So test fit it first, then we're gonna remove it, add a little bit of cyano, so the cyano actually goes inside the rudder itself, and then slot in place and activate with kicker. This is attached to the fuselage with a couple of screws, and the wheel itself is controlled directly by the rudder. Now, they recommend to glue this small plastic tube in first and then have that control the wheel. I can't see it making much difference personally, but we'll follow the instructions anyway. And onto the main landing gear which is simply held in place with the two screws that come pre-fitted. Wheel pants actually come in two halves. So make sure you know which side goes where and then slot through the screw which will act as the wheel axle. It then comes with some wooden washers, which act as separators to keep the distances right so the wheel doesn't wobble about inside the wheel pant. Personally, I found that using two was too much and one wasn't quite enough, so I added my own plastic washer as well. We then attach the other half of the wheel pant and then screw everything down with the nut provided. Now I'm adding a little bit of thread lock just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere as it isn't a self-locking nut. Now that all of course prevents the wheel pant from coming off, but it doesn't prevent it from spinning round. So we use a secondary screw to keep that in place. Now as the elevator and rudder servos come pre-installed, but the elevator and rudder didn't, we now need to connect them up with the provided linkages. As they come with a Z-bend, but the push rod is slightly larger than the hole on the servo arm, we needed to drill it out slightly before pushing that through. And then we connect the other side with the provided very small nut and bolt, which once again, as it's not a lock nut, I'm going to be adding a little bit of cyano onto the end of it just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And of course, we repeat the whole procedure for the other side, this time for the rudder. And it's starting to look like a plane, 
Now, of course, here we're installing the provided prop and spinner. However, now I did remove this again after filming it, as we always want to make sure that when setting up a model, we don't have a prop on. We don't want it flying off the table and we definitely don't want it catching any of our fingers. And the final step before going flying, of course, we need to attach the wings, push through the servo wires and attach the bolts. Now, in my case, this thing isn't going to be dismantled to go flying as it fits perfectly well in the back of my car. All in all, as you can see, a very easy model to put together as everything's pretty much already done for you and no hiccups so far. All that we're left to do is install our receiver of choice, program our radio and go fly. This is what we're going to go do now.
How'd that look? Well, on a personal note, starting with the looks, I would say that it looks fantastic. I mean, it's a classic Gary Ward MX2 colour scheme. However, the pink and the blue and the white and grey really contrast well in the sky, which helps orientation and maybe it's just a personal thing, but I think it looks really, really good. Now, before making the first test flight, when setting up all the servos, it felt like they were a little bit slow, which on a small aircraft can lead to quite a disconnect between you, the pilot, and the plane. However, I'm pleased to report that despite concerns, for whatever reason, I'm not quite sure why, whether it's geometry, airframe, that didn't cause an issue. The plane felt locked in despite not having the quickest servos on the market. I would say that it was actually better and more locked in than the red Avios Extra that we tested around about a year ago. The power plant, as you've seen in the video, is more than enough. There's loads of power in the stock motor, speed controller and prop combination. And it's all running on a 4S LiPo. Now they recommend a 4S 2200 milliamp pack, which I don't have. So I've been using a 3500 milliamp pack, which is a bit bigger and a bit heavier. However, as you've probably guessed by now from the videos, that doesn't seem to be an issue. There's plenty power for the extra weight and the plane doesn't seem to fly heavy because of it. And with that battery, I was actually getting just under eight minutes flying and that's my style of flying. So eight minutes is a full proper flight on any kind of airplane. Heck, it's more than most of the jets I've got here behind me as well. So all in all, for a plane that you can put in the back of your car and go flying and have fun, definitely two thumbs up again. Now it is made out of foam, so any kind of light ding or crash isn't going to be an issue. It is painted foam, just like any kind of uh, this style of aircraft normally. So it will scratch and it will ding. I actually lost the canopy on one flight and you can see there's a couple of scratches on the paintwork, which unfortunately there's not much you can do about it. Sure, you can touch it up a little bit with some extra paint or, or a marker, but it's a plane to go to the flying field and have fun with, not worry about. So I'm not too concerned about that. All in all, I'd say a good plane, even if it did take me way too long to actually get it built, flow and produce this video. So to everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. To the guys at Hobby King, apologies once again for that delay, but you do have here a nice flying airplane, which I look forward to flying some more in the future. So until the next video, when we'll be looking at another one of these airplanes that's similar style, but should be a lot lighter, we'll see you there. Like, subscribe, see you in the next one.